May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may know the fun story about the cat family. Um, There's a mother cat, and she has a litter of kittens, and they have this wonderful domain out in their front yard, a peaceful, uh, blissful domain. But then, all of a sudden, one day, um, a large dog infiltrated their their life and their front yard, came in, was uh, brutalizing the neighborhood, came into their front yard, and began to bark mercilessly. The mother cat shooed her kittens underneath the front porch of their house, and while the kittens watched their mother, then she went out to confront this big, mangy dog. And she came face to face with that dog, and then she said, Ruff, 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 ruff! And that dog ran away with his tail between its legs. The mother then saw that as a teaching, teaching moment and went back back and uh, went to her uh, little kittens, and she said to them, that's why it's important to learn a second language. In today's gospel text, Jesus is trying to teach Peter, James, and John, and all of us, a second language. What was their primary language? I would call it a chronos based on the word chronological. That's the language that most of us speak day by day. It's sort of the getting up in the morning, trying to make our way through a complicated, sometimes difficult world, especially in the middle of a pandemic, putting one foot in front of the other. You and I live that chronological language each and every day, trying to make the best of things. But we know that there's something more than just that day-to-day routine that daily existence. Jesus is trying to teach his disciples another language, a language that scripture has called kairos. It's cyclical language. It's God language. It's the God moment that changes all the other moments. In 1939, Winston Churchill was summoned to go to Buckingham Palace by the king uh, when he was delivered by the Rolls Royce up to the entranceway where he would then enter and speak with the king. He notes in his memoirs that he wrote on note paper that he realized in that moment in the back of that Rolls Royce was a moment that would change all the other moments in his life, would change all the other moments in Britain's life and indeed the life of the world, but also all the moments of Winston Churchill, he wrote, this moment will change all the other moments. That's Kairos language. It's the language of the kingdom of God. And Jesus is trying to teach Peter, James, and John Kairos language. He takes them up on the holy mountain, we hear. He's transfigured there with Moses and Elijah, the great lawgiver and the great prophet in Israel's history. And in that moment of transfiguration, the disciples, even through their sleepy eyes, see the glory of God. They see something more. Their language is beginning to change. It's not just day-to-day getting up, trudging through the day kind of language of chronos, but it's a God moment. And in that moment, they must have realized that all the other moments of their life would be different from then on. They are given the language of Kairos. In that moment, Jesus seems to give them two main gifts. The first gift that Jesus gives them is the, is the gift of trust. You'll remember that Peter was the one who regularly speaks out of turn. And again, on the holy mountain, Jesus says, Teacher, let us build three dwelling places, or booths, as it's also called in another version. Let us build three booths, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter is trying to hold on to the moment. He wants to live back in the Kronos language. Jesus has a good word for him that you can't capture God, you can't hold God, you can't finally hold God in the palm of your hands, but actually God holds us in the palm of God's hands. 
that God is loose in the world and you and I can't finally pin God down. God is ever-present in all kinds of situations that you and I know and those that we don't know. You may know the story long ago in a European village. There were three kind of cutaways who were trying to make their way, and uh, they, they knew of an old man who lived in a little cottage, and they went to the old man, and one of them had a bird in his hand, uh, and they wanted to catch the old man who was called the wise one of the village. They would ask the man, uh, is this bird dead? And if the, if the wise man said, well, no, it's not, then they would, uh, then they would crush that bird If the old man said the bird is dead, then they would throw the bird up and the bird would fly away. So they were all ready. They went to the door, knocked on the door. They were ready to catch this wise old man. They asked him, is this bird in our hand alive or dead? And the old man was wise enough then to say, well, uh, the conclusion of that is all in your hands. That is, Jesus is trying to say to Peter, um, it's in your hands now whether you want to live into the Kairos language and trusting God's presence in your life to cast you out of places where you want to hold on and control all your moments into places that actually have some risk where you and I can venture out, as it were, uh, and, and explore all the gifts of God A spiritual advisor I once knew said to people who would come to him for uh, prayer guidance, hold all things lightly. And that's what Jesus is trying to convey to Peter and to us. Put your whole weight down on the trustworthiness of God and then hold all things lightly. That is, make room for people and the events of their life and trust that God's presence is going to be with you. So the first gift they get, that he gives them is the gift of trust. The second gift that he seems to give them in Kairos language is the gift of glory. We hear it several times during this text that God's glory is being issued forth. That is, you and I, in seeing transfiguration, will receive something of God's glory. But that's such a churchy word, isn't it? Glory. It's sort of like vestments and stoles and altars and divine language. And yet, glory is very daily, very personal, sometimes very ordinary. To receive this gift, uh, one must say, how can I see this gift playing out in my everyday life? So let me offer this. Dare to, to enjoy your life laugh more, notice beauty around you, eat slowly enough to guess um, what um, what the ingredients are, experience good architecture, notice how shadows play on light, hum or whistle a little bit more. When's the last time you hummed or you whistled? Say thank you at least three times a day. Discover the allure of water. I know it's easy to discover that here on St. Bart's. Walk down the beach, close your eyes, and imagine what God might be saying to you, what God might be wanting to do with you next. Create something new. Remember who it was who was the first love of your life. Remember the first person you kissed. Remember the time when you met up with a friend and you held them when they cried. Dare to enjoy your life, in other words. Recognize how God is moving in your life. What am I inviting us to do? I'm inviting us to see the gift of glory face to face. It's not just on holy mountains. It's every day living with us. But you and I might be wondering, especially this week, as Russia has now invaded Ukraine and a whole lot of other things are going on in our world, how this glory then meets up with the pain and suffering and the downcasting that can happen this side of heaven. It is this, that you and I would bring a measure of glory to our brothers and sisters right around us that you and I would have good news for them in the face of some difficult situations, that we might meet up with people and let them know about hope, 
and about how God's presence can make a difference. So, long ago and far away, Jesus met up with Peter, James, and John on the holy mountain, and God continues to meet up with us. And in such wise, God wants to give us a new language, the language of Kairos, where you and I are just trudging along through our Kronos days, God gives us Kairos moments, where all those moments then change the chronological score of our life. And in that change, that Kairos moment, we're given two great gifts, the gifts of trust. Trust in God to be present with you and to lead you into what you are to do in your life. And secondly, to give you the gift of glory. That is, you and I would give people a sense of glory in the face of a difficult and complex world. Amen.